And we are live. Welcome to the NBA Strategy Show. It is Tuesday, April 16th. I am Josh Engelman here to break down a two game slate, but it's two real games finally. The regular season is in the books, and now we get to talk sort of playoffs. It's the play in, doesn't really count as regular season or playoffs in terms of the records, but it matters today because we're going to get real players playing real minutes and we can stop talking about all of the garbage on all of the awful teams. No more Memphis to deal with. No more Pistons to deal with. We can just focus on real basketball. So hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman. Shout out to Sleeper, sponsor of this show. We'll talk about them in a bit. But first, good morning, everybody. Fun to talk about. Now, obviously, we're not going to be here for the full hour. We're going to break this whole bad boy down we're going to work through each team. We're going to take a look at some Sims, and then we're going to keep it moving. I have my Sims run for my projections. We're going to run uh, some additional Sims with the stochastic projections and see where we stand. Uh, Steven, no, no showdown for the G League title game, I guess. Didn't know that that was the thing. Didn't know that it had already not happened or had happened or is going to happen. I don't know anything about the G League playoffs. Didn't know that was a thing. Mm. All right, let's get this final sim run using these stochastic projections. Boom. But now I think we just get into it. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't know if they were actually running it. They could have. It wouldn't have shocked me. Um Yeah, MLB did suck. I thought I was going to be able to sneak in. I had some Nat stacks. Uh, needed a little bit more. I ended up hanging two zeros from the Nats guys, unfortunately. That didn't help me at all. But what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I say we get into this though. Let's talk some basketball, folks. Here we go. Bang. The Los Angeles Lakers are one point favorites in New Orleans. We have a 223 total. Now, lots to think about here. Very, very, very difficult to break down two gamers. But we need to talk about what we think rotations will actually be. Uh, Q tag AD, probable tag LeBron. We're expecting everybody to play. Anthony Davis is legitimately a little dinged up. I'm not sure how much it matters to me, though, because I don't change Anthony Davis to look worse because of his potential injury. But I do have Anthony Davis as a guy that didn't show up in a single lineup for me so far. It, LeBron is the guy that I want to get to. He's 9,400. He's small forward, power forward eligible. We have him currently projected for 36% ownership. I have him as my number one guy today. He's in 54% of my stuff. Very clearly the top Laker for me. We saw him last year in their first play-in game play around 40 minutes in regulation. It actually went to OT. Uh, I went 39 for right now. It's possible that I jump up to 40. And I went 38 to AD. You know, in theory, I could get to 30, 39 or 40. But as I look at this one, LeBron is my main takeaway. He's small forward, power forward, 9,400. I got him in for 1.45 fantasy points per minute and should play around 40 minutes. I like the spot. Um, we just saw them beat up on the Pels last time out. And I don't think LeBron is in any way nervous about facing this Pelicans team. So if I'm paying up today, I certainly want to pay up for LeBron. I don't feel the same way about AD. So 9,700 power forward center eligible. He's at 1.57 fantasy points per minute over the last month. I have him at 1.33 in this game. And maybe that's something that we should walk through. Let me see if I can get back to the Lakers rates. Do I have it here? I do. All right, perfect. So I have PVP stats pulled up right now. Only using five-man rotations of the guys that are going to play today. LeBron, AD, Dinwiddie, Russell, Prince, Rui Hachimura, Gabe Vincent, Jackson Hayes. Although I think we are very live to see Jackson Hayes not play today. Uh, it's possible that he gets one rotation, but I think it, you could just see LeBron move to the five in a situation like this and we get more guards out there, but we'll see that. 
So they've played a ton of minutes together. 1,171 minutes. AD is played with four other dudes that are going to play heavy minutes today. But in that 1,100 minutes, he only has a 25% usage rate, 24.9. Um, and I think that's interesting to see. 60% true shooting. So I have AD in for 25% usage. I made adjustments to his assist rates and his rebounding rates. Same for all of these guys. I dug into the rates for every single player. And it's just based on the guys that are out there. AD looks like a bit of a struggle to me. I greatly prefer getting to Sabonis over AD. Now, the power forward eligibility does help. But as I see it, he's the guy that I'm trying to get away from. Now, after those two, it gets pretty dicey for the Lakers. You've got Austin Reeves who I have in for 35 minutes. You've got D'Angelo Russell, who I have in for 36 minutes. He is very live to just lose minutes on a random day. It all depends on how well Gabe Vincent's playing. Because if Gabe Vincent can approximate like last year's Gabe Vincent, he's sort of the dude that they really want to be out there once D'Angelo Russell starts getting picked on in the pick and roll. But you've got Reeves, you've got Russell, and you've got Rui as the other guys that you could feel like decent about getting to. Reeves is 10% owned. Russell's 20% owned. Hachimura is 10% owned. I'm getting to a little bit more Reeves. I went six, uh, 35 minutes. Only have him in for 0.9 fantasy points per minute. Russell, I'm a little bit under the field. I think he's pulling a little bit too much love. There's downside here now. And then for Rui, 5,700 looks good. You know, he's going to be in that 0.85 range. Completely reasonable dude to fill out a lineup. But, you know, 10% owned, that makes sense. If we start looking at optimal rates, we have LeBron James at 40, 35% owned. Looks great. We have AD at 30, owned 30. Again, I'm, a, I'm, I'm less of a believer in Anthony Davis in this spot. Russell, we actually have it with a positive bit of leverage. And then Austin Reeves is the guy that's sneaking in the most. 16% optimal, 9% owned. Let's see what the uh, stochastic sims actually look like for the Lakers. And a reminder, this is stochastic projection, stochastic sim. We got to 47% LeBron James. That is the most of anybody on the Lakers. I think we can very safely say that LeBron is the priority here. Because we got to eight, now we got to 29% of Anthony Davis. But that's neutral to the field. Now, I'm way more pessimistic on AD. I've got LeBron projected quite a bit ahead of Anthony Davis, and I think that will continue throughout the day. And then we have Russell at 26%. That one surprises me a little bit. I didn't expect us to go over the field on Russell. I'm very curious to see what that looks like. Massive negative player ROI on Russell is standing out. Reeves only got to 9%, which again, surprises me based on how much positive leverage we have. And then we basically didn't get to Rui. So using my projections and my sim, using the stochastic projections and stochastic sim, the way that I look at this game is LeBron James is clearly tier one best thing you can get to. You will work yourself into AD and Russell. I will be fading Anthony Davis. I will be a little light on D'Angelo Russell. I anticipate getting to more Reeves and potentially more Rui. But I don't anticipate getting anything else. I Just like the Stochastic Sim, I don't have Vincent. I don't have Hayes. I don't have Dinwiddie. I don't have Prince. No Max Christie, uh, who I don't really expect to play here. LeBron is the priority. Overwhelming. I'm very much less interested in AD. And I'm not all that far off of the uh, the prop market either. His props for points, 24 and a half, a little bit of juice to the under. I have it at 23 and a half. So I'm, I don't think that I'm miles away. His rebound prop is 13 and a half. Pretty heavy juice to the under, minus 122. I have 12 and a half. And then his assist prop is two and a half, heavy juice to the over. I have 3.2. So I think I'm right on the mark for Anthony Davis. And I do think that he's going pretty significantly over owned based on the way that I have him projected. If you like AD today, I'm not going to tell you different, but I think that ownership is too high. Seeing what that looks like by the end of the day will be the most important piece of this. Back. All right. 
Does anybody have any questions about the Lakers right now? I'm going to take a look and see if there's any Lakers bets out there. But if anybody has any questions about the Lakers, drop them in. NBA bets on the Lakers side. We don't really have anything that we're we're really pushing right now. None of those guys are on the Lakers. So I don't really have a bet to project coming out of Odd Shopper. We will have some for some of these other teams and games. But in this situation, I don't see it for the Lakers. All right, to the 211 people that are here, hit that like button if you haven't done it yet. We've got a lot of shows coming up for the rest of the day. I don't want to miss it, so let me hit you with the goods for today's schedule because we're jam-packed with shows. Obviously, this show is going on right now. MLB Strategy Show coming up after this at 11 a.m. NHL Strategy Show is going to be at 2 p.m. Then you get MLB Live Before Lock at 5.30. NBA Live Before Lock with myself and Eric at 6.30. And then Greg and I will hop on to playback at 7.30 for Lakers and Pelicans. Uh, How many minutes am I projecting Vincent for? I gave him 15. Um, I think that can be anywhere from 10 to 20. And it really is going to come down to if the Pelicans are hunting D'Angelo Russell, how is he doing? If it's going poorly defensively, or if Russell is shooting the lights out, then I think that he can stay out there. If the shot's not falling and he's getting picked on defensively, then I think you're going to see a lot more Gabe Vincent. But I went 15. It's going to be very difficult to get to Gabe Vincent today without expecting a little bit more. And certainly, if you're getting to Gabe Vincent, you're probably not going to have D'Angelo Russell in that lineup. So that's going to be the Lakers side of this one. Now we'll go to the Pels. Now they should have everybody available. This is where it starts to get a little crazier. Way more ownership coming in here. We have 48% ownership coming into Larry Nance. 40 to CJ McCollum. 40 to Zion Williamson. 25 to Herb Jones. And 10 for Trey Murphy. 10 for Brandon Ingram. I'm going to start with the guy that I'm getting the most of which is Herb Jones. He's 5,100. He's small forward, power forward eligible. I went 36 minutes. We went 36 minutes. We have him 32% optimal, 26% owned. You get small forward, power forward eligibility. I am very happy to get to a lot of Herb Jones, just flexibility across the board. The other guy that I want to get a ton of is Larry Nance. Now we just saw this exact game happen. And we saw Joe Val basically not play. I think he got like eight minutes. I went 28 minutes to Larry Nance. I went 12 to Joe Val. The site went 29 Larry Nance, 14 to Joe Val. We have Larry Nance, 64% optimal, 47% owned. Massive positive leverage. I completely agree. I got to 56% of Nance. He's the guy that you're expecting to play bigger minutes at the five today. So I think that you need to be getting to Nance. I think he and Herb Jones are my two preferred options. But I'm not stopping there. Uh, CJ should play in and around 40 minutes. I went 39. 40% owned. I basically got 40%. 1.05 fantasy points per minute. We have him. 38% optimal. 39% owned. We also have Zion. 32% optimal. 38% owned. That's pretty significant negative leverage. I went 37 minutes. I'm seeing it the same way as our boom bust tool. I'm way under on Zion, just 8%. So I didn't really get to Zion. I didn't really get to AD. I am getting to Trey Murphy. Shooting guard, small forward. Now the minutes might come down here, but he's a 0.95 guy. I'm 20% over the field. We have Murphy 16.5% optimal, 10% owned. Huge positive leverage. Love it. Love the pieces I'm getting to. And then if you want to get sneaky, Brandon Ingram sitting out there at 7,300, point guard, shooting guard, didn't look great in that first game back. I went 32 minutes. We have no idea how much Brandon Ingram is going to be playing today. But we have him 13% optimal, 8% owned. That's positive leverage. I got to 14%. I'm taking a pretty big stand on the Pels. Certainly much more than I'm getting to from the Lakers. 
I'm not getting to Dyson Daniels. I'm certainly never getting to Joe Val. And I'm definitely not getting to Jose Alvarado in this spot. The guys that I want to prioritize, CJ, Herb Jones, Larry Nance, Trey Murphy. Now let's take a look and see what the stochastic sims spit out for the Pelicans. See if we're on the same side here. We can summarize the best plays. All right. First guy up, 91% exposure to Larry Nance. I have absolutely no disagreement here. He does look like one of the best plays today. Do I think that he's going to continue to have that sort of positive leverage? No, it's going to it's going to come closer to neutral. Like either the optimal rate comes down or the ownership will come up. Um 39% to CJ. So I'm in agreement with Nance. I'm in agreement with CJ. We got 38% of Herb Jones. I'm in complete agreement. My differentiation piece here is Zion. That's the guy that I'm lighter on. Stochastic Sim got to 34%. I do not share that same feeling. Right now, I am fading AD and fading Zion, getting to some other spots in some bigger volume. If you see that differently, I get it. Look, Zion's going to play 37 minutes, maybe more, and 1.2 to 1.25 fantasy points per minute. Good luck. Hayes will be the guy today. Well, you could have him because no one else is going to play him. He'll be basically completely unowned and should be. I think you're a lot more likely to see LeBron James play the five today for the Lakers than you are to see any real minutes to Jackson Hayes. If Larry Nance is going to be the center for the Pelicans, what do you need Jackson Hayes for? Nothing. You can get by with Rui Hachimura and LeBron James as the predominant five. Only way you could roster Jackson Hayes is if Anthony Davis is simply out. Uh, Steven, I went to 13 minutes for Dyson Daniels, and I went to 13 minutes for Alvarado. On the site, we went 12 Alvarado, 13 Daniels. I like this first game a lot. I like how close both games are. One point line for the Lakers, three point line for the Warriors, uh, 223 total for the Pels, 224 total for the second game. Like this is, these games are both very, very close to each other. All right, so let's sum up the first game. And if you have any other questions, hit me. The best plays that you can get to. Add one more here. Or team Lakers. Got it. All right. Best plays you can get to from the first game. Larry Nance. No disagreements. LeBron James. CJ McCollum. Herb Jones. Those four guys are the four priorities that I see coming out of this game. I'm a little bit heavier on Trey Murphy. I'm a little bit heavier on Austin Reeves. I'm a little bit lighter on Zion and AD. But Nance, LeBron, McCollum, Herb Jones. Those are my four favorite options coming out of Lakers Pels. Fun little slate we've got going on here so far. Do you guys want to sign up? At Stochastic, maybe you should. Maybe you should do it so that you can get our NBA Sims Max Weekly Package for 50% off. The regular season ended. We want to keep you guys around for the playoffs because we're going to have a ton of slates for the next couple of weeks with multi-game slates throughout all of the first round. We'll have fantastic showdown contests as well. You can get 50% off your first payment of our NBA Sims Max Weekly Package by using the code PLAYOFFS. Link should exist in the description, but if it doesn't, when you go to check out, you just got to enter the PLAYOFFS tag. That'll get you projections, ownership, Sims, lineup generator, contest generator, premium Discord, and more. It's a hell of a deal. So get that 50% off using the promo code PLAYOFFS. It's here for you. This deal's not going to last forever, but we want to get you guys in for this first stretch of the playoffs. So take advantage now while you can. 50% off is a big deal.
I would be very, very, very surprised if Joe Val played 15 to 20 minutes. Very surprised. Look, I wouldn't be surprised at all if they just started Larry Nance, but th- I doubt they do that. I think you see a first rotation for Joe Val, and that's about it. I definitely don't expect 26 minutes out of Jose Alvarado. That would be um, that would be very, very, very surprising to everybody involved. Yeah, that would shock me. All right, let's go to game number two. The Golden State Warriors, three-point favorites in Sacramento, 224 total. Now, Warriors are at full strength, except Gary Payton is going to be out of for a while, I guess. And then for the Kings, no Herder, no Monk. But we know that. Arkathelza, water? Drinking water? So let's think about the Warriors here. 35% ownership coming into clay. Not the highest, though, because we have 50% ownership coming into Andrew Wiggins. And then it gets dicey. 20% ownership to CP. 20% ownership to Draymond. 25 to Steph. 15 to Trace Jackson Davis. 3 to Jonathan Kaminga? I've got a way more of Kaminga, but we'll talk about that piece in a second. Let's start it off by talking about the easiest one to talk about. That's Andrew Wiggins. I went 30 minutes. He's 4,900, small forward, power forward eligible. I only have him in at 0.9 fantasy points per minute. But that position and that price look amazing. We went 32 minutes. We also have him 40% optimal. That all looks good to me. Andrew Wiggins is definitely going to be on the short list coming out of Golden State. After that, it gets weird. Like, I'm very surprised to see Jonathan Kaminga not pulling more ownership. We have him 12% optimal, 3% owned. If he's 3% owned, He's like the best GPP play you can get to. It led me to 34. Now I expect his ownership to come up and I figure I end up in the 20s. But I just want to point out a 3% owned Kaminga is the dude you're looking for. I think Chris Paul looks totally fine. I think Clay Thompson at 6,200 looks totally fine. If he had small forward eligibility, he'd look so much better. I find Steph very difficult to get to. 8,700. I went 36 minutes. He's 24% owned. I only got to 8%. I think we're going to see a lot more of De'Aaron Fox than Steph Curry. Um, Trace Jackson Davis, I find very difficult to want to get to. I think he's properly priced. I think Draymond is pretty difficult to get to, even in 33 minutes. Now, maybe I should be bumping those guys up a couple minutes. I don't really see many places where you can steal playing time from these guys. So my preferred options are Wiggins, Kaminga, and Clay, but we have 40% optimal to Wiggins, 30 to Curry, 30 to Clay, 20 to Draymond, 20 to Chris Paul, 15 to Trace Jackson Davis, another 10 to Jonathan Kaminga. I think you can get weird on Pajemski if you want to. I don't expect him to get big minutes, but you know, if it starts to cook, maybe he's the dude if he's unowned on a day like today. But now we want to see what the stochastic Sims have to say. And as we look at Golden State, 49% exposure to Steph Curry. Now, that's this is a, we're another huge divide. I have four and a half less fantasy points projected. But I'm not getting there. Steph is less important to me. I'd be very happy to get to Steph Curry in a game where they're trying to save their season in Sacramento. But I'm not in agreement with our stochastic sim. I am in agreement with Andrew Wiggins being pretty heavily owned. Now, we're light on Wiggins in exposure. But at the same time, he does look very clearly like the best overall option from the Warriors. The price and the position are too much to ignore. And then it's just scattered wide. 18% to Clay, 17 to Draymond, 14 to Trace Jackson Davis, 13 to Chris Paul, 9 to Jonathan Kaminga. We're getting a bit of the Warriors across the board. But in our in the stochastic sims, we're hitching our wagon to Steph Curry and to a lesser extent Wiggins. For me, it's Wiggins, it's Kaminga, and it's Clay. It's hard 
to look at Golden State and feel good about any individual play that you grab. I think they all look way more similar than any of the other teams on the slate. Looks like we're not going to have Giannis in game one, evidently. Not that that's surprising. So I think you want to cast a pretty wide net on Golden State. Right now, I have the most of any team on Sacramento, and they're the chalk by a mile. My second most exposed team is the Pels. I have twice as much Golden State as I do the Lakers. So I think the Warriors look good. But this is a spot where I think the ownership is really going to wiggle around a bit. And then finally, let's look at Sacramento. Before we do that, though, Sleeper, they're the sponsor. Up to $500 on your first deposit when signing up at Sleeper. They'll match whatever you put in up to 500 bucks. It's a pick em site. You should play through that bonus and figure out if you like it, but you get dynamic payouts on some of your plays. So you can get a multiplier up to 100x on the card you put together. You could also find additional plays at Odds Shopper on the pick'em side. Now, for right now, not seeing anything popping up pretty heavily on Sleeper. We have uh, Tanner Babi under five and a half strikeouts. That is the best play on Sleeper at this moment, but you could find more on Odds Shopper. But ultimately, I think you should take advantage of this deposit bonus. That's the best thing that you're going to find. This deposit bonus up to 500 bucks, put in 490, get 490. It's that easy. It's that easy. So please sign up at Sleeper if you're interested. I think you should be because acquiring money is the thing we're trying to do here. No matter what, we want more money and taking advantage of that deposit bonus is the easiest way for you to get it. All righty, final team, Sacramento Kings. This is where all of the ownership is going, and it's completely deserved, and I don't think that you can get away from any of the guys that I'm about to mention. Davion Mitchell, 40% owned. De'Aaron Fox, 55% owned. Sabonis, 37. Barnes, 68. Murray, 75. Keon Ellis, 60. Trey Lyles, 15. I have every single guy that I just named in at least 32% of my lineups. Now, sometimes that's a huge stand. Some Like Trey Lyles, for example. I'm way over the field of his 16% ownership. But Harrison Barnes, the barnacle of the bay, I'm half the field, even though I have him in 38% of my lineups. I'm half the field on Keon Ellis, who I have in 30% of my lineups. He's 60% owned. By the way, I took the under on my prize picks video. But I will happily... Get to all of the Keegan Murray. I will happily get to all of the De'Aaron Fox. I will happily get to all of the DeMontis Sabonis. Those three guys, Fox, Sabonis, Murray. I have them in for 40, 39, and 37 minutes. They're all in 60 plus percent of my lineups. This is the best side bar none. I'm happy to be neutral on Mitchell. I'm happy to get all of the Barnes and the Ellis and the Lyles. I don't know how you get away from Sacramento. They're the clear best team. You don't have to have any interest in Alex Len. I don't expect him to play much. They might not play him at all. You want to play Sabonis 40 minutes? You can play Trey Lyles for eight minutes as the backup center against any of the people you're running out for Golden State. That looks good to me. I think the minutes between Keon Ellis and Davion Mitchell and Harrison Barnes and Trey Lyles will be very interesting. You can see that move a couple different ways. But for Fox, I'm expecting 40 minutes or more. For Sabonis, I'm expecting right around 40. And I think you could see Keegan Murray get there. I went 33 minutes to Barnes. We went 34. I mean, think about some of these optimal rates. Optimal Fox, 52. Murray, 66. Barnes, 55. Keon Ellis, 57. We have negative leverage to Sabonis. I like Sabonis more than I like Anthony Davis. And that's my separator here. I'm getting to Sabonis. I'm basically taking anything that I got out of AD and giving it to Sabonis. The Sacramento Kings are the best team that you can get to. For sure, not close to me. Not close to the ownership either. And you're going to see it here in the stochastic sim too. 73% exposure to Keegan Murray. Completely agree. Add him to the shortlist. 72% to Keon Ellis. Now, I don't agree here. 
but I do think he has the upside. I got him in for 28 minutes. I think he could play 24 or 32, and I wouldn't be surprised. But if they need offense, you know, maybe they stretch this out in a different way. If they're leaning defense, I get it. But then they could also just lean on Davion Mitchell potentially. So I went 28 minutes and I feel comfortable. He's the guy that scares me the most from Sacramento. We also got 67% exposure to Harrison Barnes. Do I have that much? No. Do I think he looks great today at 4,300 playing well north of 30 minutes? I do. Fox in 65%. Now that one I agree with. Write him down. That goes on the short list. So Fox and Murray for sure. 31% exposure to Davion Mitchell. Completely agree. That's right around the field. But here's the interesting piece. We only got to 6% of DeMontis Sabonis in the stochastic sim. Remember, we did get to AD. I think this is going to be the most important decision point on the slate. Whether or not you feel AD or Sabonis is the guy that you should get to, I think that's the most important decision on today's slate. I'm personally going to Sabonis. Your mileage may vary. Getting that power forward eligibility from AD. If that's the direction you want to go, I think that's fine. Maybe you want to go to both of them and you're not looking as much at the LeBron Jameses of the world or the Zion Williamsons at that point. But I personally prefer DeMontis Sabonis to Anthony Davis right now. Maybe that changes by the time we get to live before lock. We're going to have a full hour to break down these two games, but I'm leaning Sabonis over Anthony Davis. We barely got to Trey Lyles in the stochastic sim. That one I definitely disagree with. He's 3,800. Now, maybe they play him less, but if he's going to be 14% owned, that starts to creep into this situation where you might be able to find a little bit of additional value. Now, we only have him 13% optimal, but we went 16 minutes. I went 20. That piece of information is huge. The figuring out the minutes for Trey Lyles is very important. I'm leaning a little bit more. I think he fits this matchup. And I think he's live to play the non-center minutes for Sabonis. And if that's the case, that becomes way more interesting to me. And then it increases his ceiling because then we probably don't get to see Alex Len and we have seven extra minutes to go around. But we don't know yet. That's the point of these playoff games. You really need to buckle down and figure out what do you think is going to happen for this team? Not performance, but playing time. You want to make sure that you have your best thought process of who's actually going to be out there when the game matters most. So let's sum up this final uh, stochastic sim, and let's look and see who stands out the most. And let's make our final little short list of guys that you should be getting to. So on the stochastic sim, Larry Nance got into 90%. Uh, I don't have that much, but I'm over the field. Larry Nance is on your short list. Keegan Murray is on the short list. I don't agree with Keon Ellis. I do agree with Harrison Barnes. Well, I guess if I agree on Barnes, I got to agree on Ellis too. So we're going to leave them both out. Nance, yes. Murray, yes. Fox, yes. LeBron James, yes. CJ McCollum, yes. We're going to say right there, that's where I'm drawing the line. Those my core. That's my core five for today. Nance, Murray, Fox, LeBron, CJ McCollum. That's where we stand right now on the DraftKings side. I'll even show you guys the number one lineup that came out of the Sims this morning. CJ McCollum, Keon Ellis, Andrew Wiggins, Keegan Murray, Larry Nance, De'Aaron Fox, Jonathan Kaminga, Steph Curry. That is the number one lineup coming out of the Stochastic Sims this morning. And now, for all you FanDuel crazies, we're going to run FanDuel as well. So let's generate a player pool for FanDuel. And let's see where we end up. I'm excited for this slate. Make sure you're hitting that like button here. We're up to 380 people in the door. People still want the playoff coverage, baby, and I love it. So make sure you're hitting that like button. All right. Player pool generated for FanDuel. Now let's sim those lineups and let's see where we end up. Yeah, I'm pumped for this slate. I'm pumped to watch the games. Like, Pell's Lakers should be amazing. And then you get Golden State, Sacramento to find out who goes home. Like, that's rivalry game. 
in Sacramento. Warriors trying to, both teams trying to save their seasons. What a late night hammer we're going to get to there. I love it. I love it so much. It's so much fun. I'm so happy we could talk about real basketball now because it's been dog shit lately. Just truly awful. All right, almost finished up here on the FanDuel side. And then we can go ahead, show out top plays and the best projected lineup to start the day. Here we go. Number one lineup coming out of the FanDuel sim. Fox and Curry. McCollum and Ellis. Herb Jones and the Barnacle of the Bay. Kaminga, Murray, Larry, Nance. Those are your top, that's your top lineup coming out of the FanDuel Sim to start the day. Top exposures. Larry Nance, 97%. Keon Ellis, 84%. Then we drop down to three guys in the 60s. Murray, Fox, Barnes. You get two guys in the 50s, Herb Jones and Steph. And then two guys in the 40s, LeBron James and Davion Mitchell. This is a fun slate, boys and girls. I love it. I truly do. I'm so happy to finally be talking about games that matter, get these consolidated rotations, watch real legitimate basketball games. There's some high-end plays out there today. Figuring out who they are and figuring out the difference between them, it's going to be very fun. Do you like AD? Do you like DeMontis Sabonis separated by $100? That decision point will change everything on today's slate. You get it right, you're off to a fantastic start. Exactly, Russell. No more Memphis. Good riddance. Good riddance. Anything else you guys want me to touch on before we get out of here? MLB Strategy Show is coming up next at 11 a.m. You tell me what you guys want to see, if you want to see anything else, and we can do it. Otherwise, I'm a duck on out of here. It's been swell, folks. It's been swell. I'm going to go ahead and assume that since I don't see anything in chat, I can get it on out of here. Hit my little southern accent there. I think it was decent. Shout out to Sleeper once again. Don't forget, the promo code is PLAYOFFS. P-L-A-Y-O-F-F-S. PLAYOFFS is the promo code. 50% off an NBA Sims Max Weekly Package. Why not get it, guys? Why not? You got today and tomorrow. You get Friday for the final games of the play-in. And then we dive directly into the first round of the playoffs with fantastic slates for the first round. Usually get three gamers. Sometimes you get some four gamers. It's really the most fun stretch for the NBA when you can play with these consolidated rotations. But that's where we stand. Use that promo code. Sign up for Sleeper. That's going to do it for me. Thank you guys for being here. We almost didn't get this show today, guys, at least not from me, but I got out of jury duty. I had to go yesterday. We ended up, I ended up getting sent home, got to call at six o'clock last night to find out I didn't have to go back. So I'm going to talk to you guys later. Thank you for being here. This was the NBA strategy show. Good luck tonight.